Basics of Mammography Mammography is a special type of breast imaging which allows low dose x-ray radiation. It is used as a screening tool to detect early cancers in asymptomatic women. It is also used to detect and diagnose breast cancers in women who present with complaints of breast lump, pain, nipple discharge or nipple retraction. So what are the indications of mammography? By and large, there are two major indications, screening and diagnostic. Screening mammograms are done for women who do not have any complaints. They just come for as a screening test after the age of 40. Diagnostic indications include breast lump, pain, nipple discharge and nipple retraction. So who should undergo a screening mammogram? The ACR, which is the American College of Radiology and Society of Breast Imaging, recommend yearly mammograms for women starting at 40 years of age. The John Hopkins Radiology and Radiological Sciences Breast Imaging Section supports the above-mentioned recommendation. The National Cancer Institute recommends that women aged 40 and above should get mammograms done on a regular basis every one to two years. The American Cancer Society published new guidelines in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2015 which recommends annual screening from 40 to 55 years of age. It can be switched to once in two years thereafter. What is the best time to undergo a mammogram? So typically women are advised to undergo a mammogram a week following the menstrual cycle. A week prior to the menstrual cycle or during the cycle the breasts are generally tender and hence the time, this time frame should be avoided. Also, it is very important to exclude the possibility of a pregnancy. The patient has to inform the doctor or the technician if she has missed or if she has a delayed period. The preparation required for mammography is certain instructions which have be, to be given to the patient which is that on the day of the test the patient should not refrain from wearing any talcum powder, any deodorant or lotion in the underarms or in the mammary region. These uh, can cause artifacts on, in the film and hence can lead to a wrong diagnosis or a misdiagnosis. Also, it is very important to instruct the patient to carry all the previous mammograms, the doctor's file, previous medical records, etc. Previous mammograms are very important. Comparison is a must. So what are the views for mammography? So there are two standard views. The CC view, which is the craniocaudal projection, and the MLO view, which is the medial lateral view. In the CC view, the cassette is placed under the breast at the level of the inframammary fold and the breast is pulled out until the inframammary fold is taut. Compression is then applied and X-ray beam is directed vertically from above. What is the medial lateral view? The C-arm of the mammographic unit is rotated to 45 degrees for most women so that the cassette is parallel to the pectoral muscle. The film holder is kept high in the axillary fossa and the patient's arm is abducted at elbow by 80 degrees. The x-ray enters from the medial side. There are certain supplementary views which are also taken in specific cases. These include lateral projections which could be mediolateral or lateromedial projections. There is an extended CC projection, cone down compression projection to obtain maximum information in a localized area. 90 degrees lateral view and angled CC views to distinguish any asymmetry from true lesions and very important spot and magnification views. There are certain criteria for image quality assessment. All the breast glandular tissue should be imaged. The image annotation should include the date of the mammogram, the patient ID which, which is the name and the unique registration number or the date of birth. Side marker should be properly placed right and left. The radiographer ID and the cassette ID also ideally should be included. To assess quality also it is important to maintain correct exposure. There should be no movement artifact, no skin folds and the, both the images should be symmetrical. Optimal with craniocordial views. So how do you, how do you find out whether it's optimal or no? You have to check whether all the glandular tissue is visualized, it should be identified, the nipple should be seen in profile view, 
It should be seen in the midline of the image. The length of the posterior nipple line should be within 1 cm in size of the posterior nipple line on the MLO view and the images have to be symmetrical. How to check whether the MLO view is optimal? The pectoral shadow seen down to the level of the nipple or lower. The inframammary fold should be well seen. The nipple should be seen in profile and the images have to be symmetric.